Okay guys, well here's the finished product. Everybody, this is my buddy Terry. He's the one that's been helping me through this whole thing and getting all the spoilers and stuff on today. And this is the, he's here with, a, with his truck in his garage that I told you was just an awesome truck. So um, he's gonna tell you a little bit about it. I asked him to, you know, to fill you guys in on it. And so I'm gonna leave it up to you to tell us about it. All right, it's a 1931 Ford. And the body is all original. There's no glass, all steel. The gas tank's still there, although I did add another tank in the back uh, because this one was kind of getting bad, so I changed it. Uh, when I bought the truck, it was this red color, and it had the interior in it as far as the upholstery. I changed all the steering, the gauges, and all that. I wanted to keep the truck as much as stock as I possibly could. Uh, I put a 350 just for cruising. It's got coilovers all the way around it. Four, or four bar system in the rear, coil in the front. It's got power steering, power brakes, air conditioning, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, it definitely looks it, that's for sure. It's a, it's a beautiful the truck. truck. was actually painted. This paint is actually a lacquer that was painted sometime in the early 90s. So all the paint and the striping, and the scallops or pinstriping, whatever they want to call it, that, that's original from the truck when I got it. Uh, I really don't know who built it, but uh, when I got it, it was very undrivable. <laughs> okay? It was kind of scary. So I just, it's, it, the top of the truck looks the same almost, except for all the running gear is all brand new stuff. It's a steel top 31 too. It's a, it's a rare, they, it has a steel top on it instead of the canvas. And I just covered the roof of it up because it had a couple little blemishes and stuff in it. And at the time, with the money, the way finances were, it was the least expensive thing to do. Well, it really looks good. It really does. It's, it's got disc brakes, four wheel all the way around, well wood. How often do you drive it? Uh, since I moved up here doing honeydew stuff, I haven't driven it maybe two or three times since I've been up here. But uh, next summer I'm going to start, it's my time to start paying, playing with the toys. <laughs> the wife stuffs the house, all that stuff, okay, I'm good. How long have you guys lived up here? Three years. Three years. This is going on our fourth year now. This is just one of my toys. This is like, this, this one here I used to, when we lived down where I moved from, I used to drive this all the time. I'd take it out on the weekends, go to shows, we'd just drive it around, have fun. It's been everywhere, down to Monterey, all over different places. And uh, it just, Nice. It's got a few dents and little scratches and stuff from driving it, little stars in the fenders and stuff. But it don't bother me. It's, it, it's a driver. It's fun to play with. Yeah, it definitely looks it. Yeah, guys, he's got a couple other hot rods, too, up in his other garage. Um, he's going to have to put a new motor in it. But uh, yeah, when I came down to his shop for the very first time, I saw this and my, uh, I had the, the drool factor going on. I thought this was like the, this was a pretty cool truck. So when I got here today, it was all covered up and I'm like, hey, you gotta uncover this. I gotta show this car off. We're up in, in the other garage that, uh, that Terry has. And like I told you, I wanted to show off some of his, his toys here. This is this other race car that I was telling you about. And this has been uh, been a labor of love of his for a while, and uh, so I'm going to have Terry tell you a little bit about this one too. Well, it's a it's a 1926 track team. Uh, I built it out of just a fiberglass body and the frame, uh, but I kind of had to change everything. I'm kind of guy. I wanted it like I wanted it. When I bought it, it was way too high up in the air. And, it was almost like a, a, what do they call it, high boy, and I didn't like it. So 
I lowered it, redone. I cut everything out of the frame and redone it, put the motor mouth and everything in different places. And so I could get it where I wanted it. Uh, there's just a lot of work, things that you can't really see, uh, like the steering, for instance. I was worried about having a hard time getting in and out of the car. Well, I put this in there. So now I can get in, climb it over, lock it in, drive off. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. Good. It's a 358 Stroker that I threw a rod in it about a month ago. So I'm in the process right now of taking it apart and pulling the engine out and getting it fixed again. Uh, but it's, uh, it's got coilovers all the way around. Most of the parts that come out of this car, or are on this car, are off my race cars. I used to race cars for a few years, like about 15, and I used to more or less build them. I wasn't too good at driving it, but I seemed to be pretty mechanical, so this is what I started doing. When I quit racing, I had these parts and I didn't know what the heck to do with them all. And so I just decided, okay, I'm just going to take them all and build something. That's why I built the body, or I bought the body and the frame. <coughs> and when I did, nothing worked. Nothing fit, you couldn't get the motor in, the firewall was there. So I just kind of took it on myself and decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it my way. It's a mechanical car. There's nothing electronic on it, nothing. The, it's run off of a Magneto, right out of a race car. It's got two and seven eighths injectors on it, out of a race car. The alternator, which is off of it right now because I'm in the process of taking it apart, is at, the alternator is actually the fan. The, the oh God, I'm losing it here. Uh, this right here, the pump off the water pump. Uh huh. That is the alternator. Oh wow! So you you don't have alternators and stuff hanging off of it and stuff. I wanted to keep it as close as I could. The headlights are off of motorcycles. They're off Harley's. Harley motorcycles. The front end, I changed it around to where it's front steer instead of rear steer because there's no way for me to do what I wanted to do back there. So I reversed everything and put a reefer. I had to build all these things. There's a lot of stuff that I built because you couldn't go down and buy them. And so I've made a lot of stuff. Hence, that's why he's got that nice big shop down there with all those tools. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, I was here when, I was here when his engine uh, Expired. decided it was going to uh, <laughs> go and I, I have to give it, he had, was very calm, cool, and collected when, when the rod shot out of the bottom of the engine. <laughs> uh, he was more fearful of the oil leaking on the floor and his wife being mad than he was the fact that he was going to have to rebuild a motor. So I went with him to SEMA um, and he did some scouting out there when we were in, in Las Vegas this, last, this year. And, uh, it's where he came up with the idea, and I think he got some of the parts to be able to put this one back together. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's fun to drive. It's scary as hell, though. Yeah. Because it, it's, it cruises at 80 miles an hour down the freeway like nothing. And then you stand on it, it'll light the tires up. On the freeway, doing 80 miles an hour, it'll light the tires up. <laughs> so That's it, crazy. it's fun to drive. It is a fun toy. Yep. Yeah. Except it's broken right now. Yeah, well, yeah, you'll have that fixed in no time, I'm sure. Yeah, as soon as I get done with the honeydew list. <laughs> there you go, there you go. And then he's got, I think I was telling you in the earlier version uh, or the other the part, of the, part of the videos, yeah, I was telling you that, um, that uh, his wife has this, uh, what year is this? That's a 2000. It's a 2000 C5. Um, and then when they got together, they decided they were going to go and they just saw the, the C7 for the first time on a, on a TV series or a TV show, a commercial, and they, um, they tried to hunt one down at the dealer and they couldn't even find one. They was, it was that, picture. yeah, they <laughs> couldn't even get a picture of one in that bad. So they decided they wanted to get one. So they went down to a dealer and they ordered it and they were, um, they were lucky enough to be able to do the uh, uh, the museum delivery, and so they got to 
They got to get this one from the museum and drive it home. If somebody's going to buy a new Corvette, that it's worth the money. It guarantee they treat you like royalty. And when we went to get this one, we walked. You no, know, I, I was excited. We went the week before to a NASCAR race in Kentucky. And I said, well, let's go see if we can go to the museum and just see if they got new ones out yet. We haven't even seen one. So we went there and, and they, the races were delayed because of rain, so they raced on Monday instead of Sunday. So they had the cars all there Sunday, all seven with different colors. Well, when we got there, they had just taken them and put them back in the plant, the Corvette plant, put them back when we got there. So I still haven't seen one. <laughs> <laughs> so the next week we flew back out because it was time to pick up the car and I'm there and talking to the people and, and we walked in the front door of the museum and here's the car sitting there. But I don't know what's mine. So I'm, I'm, I'm in there and my wife's going, well, that's, that's what, this is kind of what ours is going to look like. And the guy goes, this is yours. <laughs> I went, wow. It, it was just way cool. And, and the people there, it, it's really worth the money. If you can... Uh, add, do it anyway. It, it's cool. They treat you like royalty. You go through the plant to show you how to build. It, it was just really a very neat experience. But. Yeah. Now I've been I've been to the plant. And I've been to the museum myself, and you're right. They all they, they treat you really really well. But uh, yeah, I mean I've seen the deliveries on video, but I didn't get to do, didn't get to do that. But well, her, her daughter to go on the internet and see us while yeah. we were picking it up. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how they do that, but yeah, it was cool. Yeah, they've got webcams all over that thing. Yeah. But it was, it was really neat. Then they told me I couldn't go over uh, 50 miles an hour for 500 miles. For 50 miles an hour? Or? Over, don't go over 50 miles an hour for uh -huh. 50 miles or 500 miles. Uh -huh. And don't use the cruise control and all this kind of stuff. And I know it's breaking it in, okay. I understood that. He got the 500 and it was. We <laughs> <laughs> were in Mexico and, and there's this road. I've never been there before. And there's this road and it goes straight down and then down at the bottom of it, about a mile and a half down, there's a 90 degree turn. There's nothing out there, just nothing, right? So my wife, she's a little nuts. She says, I want to see how fast it'll go. So I got in it. I got up to what, 167. And I, I've been in cars at speeds like that before. And no, not knowing the car as well, just having it. I knew, okay, I got to back out of this because I don't know if this thing will make a 90 degree turn at 170 miles an hour. I get out and she started screaming at me. What are you doing? What are you doing? And I go, well, I got to slow down so we can make that turn. We're not doing 200 yet. <laughs> I went, okay. I married the right woman. <laughs> yeah, and if you guys knew Linda, you would know that this is not a story. That is definitely her. Well, yeah, she's, uh, she's a character, that's for sure. But she's got a, a trophy. She wanted to drag this car, so... Uh, our Corvette club at the time had uh, uh, Corvette races at Sacramento Drag Strip. We took it up there and she was beating everybody. <laughs> when we first got there, there was a, race, a guy that does a lot of drag racing and says, well, I'll show her how to do it. I go, hey, it's cool. I'm a roundy round guy. Hey, go ahead. So <laughs> she gets in and she's strapped in and he's telling her all this stuff. And so she just stands on it. When it, it oh, man, and she took off, right? Well, she did 11, sef 11 seconds in this. 11.2, I think it was, in this car. <laughs> and she goes through to get your little piece of paper. <laughs> and the girl goes, hey, no more passengers. You, you got to get out. She's doing just fine on her own. <laughs> <laughs> but she does. She gets in it. She just stands on it. I want to see how fast I can do. But she won't turn. It's got to be straight. She don't like to turn and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. It's yep. fun. It's fun. Yep. And, and then this is this is her toy that she had before you guys got together, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She had this car, this thing's got two hundred some two hundred and some thousand miles on it. Yeah, it's in really yeah, good right. shape. Yeah, she she wants to do stuff to it now. She goes, she wants to start winning trophies in car shows and stuff. And I go, honey, you know, you are talking about putting money into it. And she goes, oh. We'll, we'll just have to figure out a way. I'm going back to work. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So she wants to do things. She wants new wheels. She wants to start doing it. But she will not change anything because she likes the stock stuff. So anything that we change, we keep. Right. 
and so the car is actually going to still be original, except it's all going to be just bolt-on stuff. Yeah, no, 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 that's that's good. And you know what I found out myself having a C7 that there's so many C7s out there that just anybody can go and buy a C7 and take it to a car show, and there's really not. That's not really competition. Well, see, that's that's something new. When we bought this car. And we bought, we went, <clears throat> in the Corvette Club, we, we were the first ones to have a C7 in the whole club. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that was kind of fun because we were like, everybody went, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. Now they're so common that it's like, that's eh, just another car. That's right, exactly, a exactly. And that's, so like when we had our, our Vets for Vets car show, I took both the C7 and my C4. Yeah. But I knew darn well that my C7 wasn't going to win anything. Because like I said, everybody can just go buy a C7 now, right? And you buy that right off the lot. But it's the cars like this, the, the, the C4s, the C5s, even the C6s. That's where you're really going to be able to get... Different things. Get it, you have a chance at winning something in a car show. Because keeping something old that looks good... Is you don't you can't just buy that. No, no. and so and so the, the value of these has dropped. You you could buy a C5, you know, just a stock C5. So somewhere between probably seventeen twenty two thousand dollars. I yeah. mean, nice ones like this yeah. car. I've seen them. I've seen them as low as as low as ninety five hundred dollars. Uh, not, not not this new, but no. I've seen a '97 that low. I, I, we were we watched Barrett Jackson every once in a while, and I swear I will never buy a new car. I'm no. If we ever want to go out, well, actually, she wants a '69 Camaro. <laughs> well, you won't be able to get that. New. I would like my '58 Corvette. <laughs> you know? I mean, here we are dreaming, right? That's right. But I, you know, I just keep going, keep going, and hoping one day. So she's kept this car really, really nice she over the years. Very, and it's, very, she's she's yeah. kind of like you are when yeah. it comes to this stuff. She sees a little dust mark and freaks out, right? Yeah. Hey, you wipe it off. Well, okay. and it's hard. It's and it's super hard to keep a black car oh, right. clean. And you guys can't see it in this light, but she's got a few little little surface scuffs on it, and she's asked me to to uh, take a look at it and see if I can get those out um, because there's. I mean, really, I mean, it's, it's for its age, it is in great shape. But again, that's, you know, she wants it just that much more perfect. So, um, so she'll have a really good chance at these next season in those car shows because this thing is in really, really good shape. So um, I just wanted to, wanted to take the time to show these off. Uh, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, it's a privilege to be able to be around uh, other other people that really enjoy their cars, especially Corvettes. You know, I mean, I uh, I had a C5 and I and I loved it. I just had to get rid of it because I was you know had the bug for the C6, and then of course I had to get rid of the C6 because I had the bug for the C7. Well, these are my know? Corvettes. Yeah, these are her. Cars. These are her cars. Yeah. They're not your cars. Them are my cars. <laughs> The hot rod and the 26, <laughs> them are my cars. These are hers. I have the privilege of driving them, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's cool. Um, all right. Well, Terry, thanks again for letting me show off your cars. You're very welcome, Scott. Thanks for yeah. doing it. Yeah. I mean, you're not in the shape that I want them in right now, but we can get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the videos. We'll talk to you later.